with an urgent search and rescue operation that is currently underway in the Atlantic Ocean. Right now, U.S. Coast Guard officials are racing to find a submersible operated by a company that runs tours of the Titanic wreckage. Officials say that this was reported overdue on Sunday and is said to have only 96 hours of survival time. We are told several government agencies and deep sea companies are working on reestablishing contact with this submersible. At the same time, some believe this situation was avoidable. Joining us now is Carl Stanley, another friend of Stockton and a deep sea sub owner. Carl, thank you for being here. Thank you, Kelly. So we've been in communication with you for days, but you didn't want to speak out publicly until you had a better idea of what happened. We mentioned Carl Stanley in his 2019 email warning to Stockton Rush at the top of the program. I spoke to uh, Mr. Stanley just before air. Carl, if you can describe for us what it was like when you were on Titan and, and the noises that you heard uh, uh, when you went down on it. No, he was making promises he couldn't keep. He had no business bringing that thing out into the middle of the North Atlantic. The search was uh, a sham. I mean, it sounds like he spent more money suing his engineers to shut up than he did actually paying engineers to do testing. I remember a heated verbal exchange that he wasn't ready to do that. After the book. After the book that foretold a shipwreck to me is named Titanic too much of a coincidence Look. so I think he felt that he needed to leave a mark on the world in his avatar movie and then could write off the whole thing as an expense for making his movie yeah he thought he knew better than everybody else Carl if you can describe for us what it was like when you were on Titan and and the noises that you heard uh, when you went down on it What's going on guys? I'm back here in Honduras, in Rotong Island, to get on a submarine. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I came here and interviewed uh, Captain Carl Stanley about his infatuation with building um, submersibles. That's the one right here, his latest one. And um, he gave us so much good information. He started building submersibles when he was 14 years old. He read a book when he was nine. Please watch that video, it's in the description. It's very descriptive about his passion. But anyways, he's become a super expert in submersibles, and I decided uh, I would come see him based off of what has happened. And to my surprise, this guy has been on that other submersible um, that unfortunately had something bad happen to it. Anyways, give me a second. Oh, okay, oh, okay. It just happened. The, okay, the boat just hit this? Talking to Carl, I was right. like, what the? <laughs> All right, but this is like a boat slash submarine, right? It's like a... It's a boat with a glass bottom. All right. So here we are with the captain, Captain Carl Stanley. First off, how are you? Um, it's been a heck of a busy week. And uh, on top of all that, just had a boat smash into my dock. So a little frazzled, but... I'm hearing stories of helicopters. Yeah, well, the, the, the relaxing part was a week ago and I was uh, dropped off by helicopter in a uh, part of the jungle on the mainland where nobody had been up until about eight years ago. And I have a base camp there. That was... Uh, okay, that was the good part. Life was simple like two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. And um, a lot has happened since then. Yeah, the day we got out was the uh, day that the submarine went this um, you have had time on that sub? Uh, yeah, I did dive number two Bahamas to the same depth as the Titanic. When you say number two... He did the first one solo, and then he got willing guinea pigs for the second dive, and that was me, uh, sonar technician, and a uh, high-up person in the company who he had known since childhood with the company shortly thereafter. Okay. Um, why you? I, I, I just have to ask, why did he uh, choose to call you? Um, well, I s reached out to him. I mean, I've known him for over 10 years. Right. And he, uh, one of the other subs that his company runs is made from a component that came from the same sub that a component of my submarine comes from. So we have kind of sister submarines uh, like that. So that was another connection we had. But I am I'm one of the most experienced operators of deep sea submersibles in the world, but I'm also the only 
other operator taking the general public into the deep ocean that isn't certified. And so I think that he uh, valued my advice and input into what he was doing. But I mean, I, I volunteered. When I heard what he was doing, uh, I told him right off, like, you know, that, that was my once, once in a lifetime opportunity to go that deep in a sub. And I wanted to uh, experience that. And, you know, he, he told us before the dive to expect loud noises that he had heard on his first dive and we did. He described them as fireworks. I would say small caliber gunshots, same difference. Get out of here. That's how, I mean, the forces at those depths, according to the company's own website, the sub at, at Titanic depth was experiencing 127 million pounds of cumulative pressure on the hull. So, uh, you know, anything that's being broken with that much force applied is going to make some noise, even if the brake isn't absolutely Okay, so you, you get on the ship, dive two, it's off the coast of Bahamas, Bahamas. Marsh, Marsh Harbor. And you, how deep do you go? Roughly 12,500 feet. And you hear the noise, and, and are you calm? It was, um, you know, I mean, it started, I don't remember the exact depth. I remember, I, I uh, forwarded uh, the emails that I've had back and forth with him to different news agencies, uh, including the New York Times, just had a front page piece on that. By reviewing my emails, uh, it made noise for most of the trip, obviously the most uh, towards the end of, or when we were the deepest. And the more troubling aspect was it even made noise all the way up to 300 feet from the surface on the yeah, up, yeah. which means that there was stored energy in there which was releasing, uh, you know, the hull is, was getting mashed up. So, and that was only on the second dive. So you take the trip, um, you, you send them an email. Can you send them a bunch of emails? Bunch? A bunch. Pages of emails. Why did you feel like you needed to tell him this and um, um, what did you tell him? I told him that he didn't have enough. I told him that the hull was breaking up, that even if he was able to, uh, I told him he didn't have a marketable product. I remember that was one uh, sticking point. Like he wanted to continue with diving right. and uh, just monitoring the sounds and, you know, tell his customers what to expect and you know he thought that he, he was going to be able to be fine and the way the sounds were so loud and how much people were spending to be there i made it very clear to him i didn't think that he had a marketable product because people would not be willing to spend that much money to hear those kinds of sounds uh, i also tried to give him a comparison to how much experience people have to have in order to do pilot's license or scuba diving or skydiving in terms of hours and certain levels of experience that have to be crossed before you have certain next benchmarks that you're allowed to do. Like for example, with skydiving, to get your B license, you have to have done 50 jumps before you're allowed to dive uh, at night or anywhere near water. So, and also I think it's, uh, they restrict what kind of uh, wind speeds you're allowed to jump in. Right. So, and then I also compared it to him. Uh, I went back through my dive logs for this submarine and my first submarine and gave him the exact points where I took a passenger to half of my operating depth. When I took a pink passenger at all for the first time, when I took a passenger to 1,500 feet, the first time I took a paying passenger to 2,000 feet, which is the deepest trip I offer right now, uh, I was well over a hundred dives of experience in this sub before I did that. We're talking like a year and a half of just non-stop diving and learning and dialing my program in. He quite literally had never done two consecutive dives without having a major system failure. He had no business bringing that thing out into the middle of the North Atlantic. And I mean, I explained it to him from every angle I could think of doing it. Uh, I don't think it was my place to try to, you know, physically interfere with him or anything. And at the end of the day, the people signed waivers 
uh, you know, I don't think he was totally honest with them exactly how how much uh, issues the submarine had had, and that information was not really uh, coagulated by all his former customers and whatnot that they would have had access to that information. Okay. What year was this when? 2019. Okay, a few years back, and yeah. uh, we had um, 20, 20 when everything was closed, yeah. and then now we're in 23, 2023, and yeah. so fairly, it's it's been fresh in terms of him working on the, the submersible. This would have been their third season diving the Titanic. Wow. Yeah. So still fresh. Wow. Man. What's your whole thoughts on everything now that it's all, it's all done in... Um, well, I think we need to, uh, this investigation is going to, uh, you know, every day we're learning more information. Right. And the more complete of a picture that we get in the last week, I've learned a lot more what kind of financial pressure he was under. Uh, the fact that he was giving away seats to YouTubers. No yeah, yeah, Mr. Beast, he... he yeah. did he offered and he turned them down I that guess. was recently yeah. that, mr yeah. beast could have been on that boat and actually. there was a, and a the next sub. next uh couple with youtube channels that uh kaden nate was it kaden nate I, I don't know but they were out there and they got in the sub but i guess something malfunctioned and they didn't get to go all the way down obviously there was not that much demand of people willing to spend quarter million dollars to see the titanic if he was trying to give away trips flying to try to woo clients and offering them discounts he needed money. That much is obvious at this point. Okay. Um, in your experience, can you describe uh, his personality or what? What you think he was going through? At I mean, the he was lately? he was he was very driven, and uh, I think another part. I mean, you know, I'm no psychologist, but to do a little junior napkin analysis here, he was from a very prominent family that. Uh, Two relatives had signed the Declaration of Independence. He was part of this uh, sort of secret society, I wanna say uh, Bilderberg group, but they had meetings in the woods in California where ex-presidents were members. There was a 30 year waiting list. Uh, you needed big money and big connections to, you know, Reagan and Bush were, were Henry Kissinger was a member of this. And they still somehow have gotten away with only uh, accepting men, no women allowed, okay. and no press allowed. And so he's rubbing elbows with these big, big names, wealthy people, but I don't think he ha had that much money. Where he went to school at Princeton, one of the buildings was named after one of his relatives. But I don't think that he had a, uh, you know, if he was that wealthy, he would have just, he wouldn't have taken on investors. He could have built this whole thing himself. He had even more, like, I mean, his Wikipedia page, is half about just all who his relatives were. And so I think he felt that he needed to leave a mark on the world and he was driven by ego and he was in a tight spot financially, probably also exa exacerbated by the pandemic. When you say that, do you mean that he, everything that happened might have been in a plan or? I don't want to uh, go on the record and say Okay, that I won't. Okay. Do you feel like um, the search was a witch hunt or and it was necessary the, the search was uh, a sham the way that the boat communicates with the sub uh, is through sound waves and while 13,000 feet underwater sounds like a great distance uh, whales can talk to each other a thousand miles away and submarines can hear things a thousand miles away I can hear boats passing when I'm 2,000 feet under water. I hear the propellers of the boats going. I've heard it raining when I'm 1,000 feet under water. That's just with my ear, not with something in the water listening to them. So, you want me to shut them up? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Hey! Oh, yeah. They're like playing with each other, yeah. biting each other's face. <laughs> they do that all the time. They're good friends, yeah, you can tell. They fall asleep with their noses touching and stuff. <laughs> really? Yeah, they're super, actually, I. The, the black one is relatively new and the other one brought him home and just oh, like, that was they're it. in love, yeah. yeah. So my point with that is that the, they were when they were listening, 
They, they, they heard that. There's no way they didn't hear that. That was 127 million pounds of kinetic energy being released at the speed of sound. Oh, we're talking about 7,000, how, how deep they were? Um, Around 12,000 feet. Okay. But that's really not that, you know. They might have even felt a shockwave on the boat. There's no missing uh, something. I, I don't even know what 127 million pounds of force going off. I saw one figure of how many tons of TNT it was. It's a lot. Like, enough to level half this end of the island. It was not, uh, but I think they were all in a state of shock. And I think the number two in the company uh, was Stockton's now widow. And I don't think she had herself in the right frame of mind to declare herself a widow. And I don't think anybody else on that boat. Maybe uh, no one had the heart to tell her. Heart, balls, gumption, courage, however you want to phrase it. But, uh, you know, they, then they let this thing turn into a big search and rescue and, oh, hope is alive. But they, they knew. Also, I mean, the mere fact that this was the first time in the history of humanity that a submersible had imploded, that's got to add to your state of shock. Well, like we, we talked about are, connections between that, right? About the Titan and um, it being the first of many things, shipwrecks. It, it was the first uh, submersible to implode in the history of humanity. And I'm sure it will probably remain the deepest implosion for a very long time, possibly ever. Right, 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 right. Um, the connections between its name. I didn't realize until recently, but the name Titan, besides just sounding like the Titanic, there was a book written more than 20 years before the Titanic sank called Titan, and it was a totally fictitious novel well before the Titanic existed that was a boat almost the same length as the Titanic, which sank on its maiden voyage due to Captain's folly by hitting an iceberg in the North Atlantic. And after the, that actually happened to the boat named Titanic, everybody came back and accused this guy of being some sort of prophet. And he's like, I just wrote a book. I don't understand how this happened. And to choose to name your submarine. After the book. After the book that foretold a shipwreck to me is named titanic and then you go into the much, water it's too much of a coincidence looking to see the titanic too much of a coincidence another coincidence is the new york times actually did a piece on the captain's wife she is actually a descendant of passengers who were actually on the titanic according to the article her family was very prominent on the titanic so much that james cameron included them in the actual movie how could they have prevented this if in your opinion more testing listen to everybody that was telling them they were up okay what about the what i don't even know that he did 20 so it's industry standard right test your vessel 20 percent deeper than what you plan to go right i've done that that's what they do with all classified subs in pressure chambers. Right. I see no evidence that he even ever did that. The material he was using, that was part of the reason why a lot of people it are talking if, if he had made it out of something other than carbon fiber, he would probably still be alive. Carbon fiber does have the best strength to weight ratio. However, uh, we need to do more, a lot more research has to be done. I'm also very distressed to see that uh, the videos I've now seen of the hull being made they show it being laid up wet, which the stronger way to do that and the way that Boeing is doing it for the airplanes is with what they call pre-preg, where instead of having the wet resin put onto the cloth, uh, it's already part of it and you don't mix part A and part B, you cure it by putting it in an autoclave under pressure, which is a superior way to cure any kind of composite material for a couple reasons. One being when it's done under pressure, it highly reduces the chances of little air bubbles forming in there, which are your weak points. And B, when you're making something very thick out of composite, which this was a very thick composite, uh, if you're doing wet layup, it's inconsistent in the cure rate because in the middle, it's building up heat because all epoxy resins uh, are exothermic 
uh, cures when they cure, putting off heat. And that's, that's a variable that would be nice to eliminate, which they do with prepreg. But prepreg preg is more expensive, and even though he told people he was using that, uh, based off the videos I've seen, it appears he lied. Well, just based off of the videos. The videos you know, from their own company. Right. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned certifications, and I think that's uh, for a lot of people, they want to understand what, what is the process of getting certified, and could you speak on the, the, that? So certification for a submarine, the two major uh, companies in the world that do that, one is the American Bureau of Shipping. They right. mostly deal with the Western Hemisphere and uh, around Europe, and that part of the world, mostly they deal with Lloyd's. Uh, those companies are also the ones that are certifying cargo ships, cruise ships. They're used to dealing with clients that if it's a million dollars or two million dollars, that's a it. rounding error. That's one tank of gas on some of right. these boats. Uh, when it comes to something as low volume uh, as a, a two passenger submersible, uh, you know, plus or minus a million dollars, that's real money to me. Right. Uh, I have the American Bureau. I, I got the American Bureau of Shipping rule book when I was before I even started building my first submarine. Yeah, we, you talked about um, yeah. getting into it around nine, nine reading a book and then start yeah. building around 14, 15 years yeah. old. I was something like 13, 14 when I got their rule book and uh, I'm very familiar with what their rules are. Uh, my first submarine was an impossibility to be certified from the square one even if I had had the resources to do that because it was so small and one of the rules is the hatch has to have uh, one meter of clearance above the water line. My submarine body was only two feet in diameter uh, so that would have completely altered the design uh, and actually my submarine was uh, you know, because it had wings that came all the way around the submarine and the hatch was in the middle, it was more seaworthy. And, you know, I, I'd actually gotten in and out of that in six, seven foot seas. Right. So that was, uh, you know, my first lesson with, with the it. Probably there was a way to get a special exemption and show them like, hey, look, because I got the wings going all the way around and it's this stable and maybe I don't need a full three feet. But you're paying for somebody to make a, a change to a rule book that anytime that changes have been made to that rule book, it, it all happens maybe once or twice a decade. Right. And it costs somebody a lot of money. So in a tight end's position um, where he was charging a, um, a little under uh, 200, 200. 250K a seat. Right. Yeah. Could you have thought he, he would be able to afford to get I No, he, uh, I saw something else where another expert chimed in that the, the real ticket price for what he was trying to do could have easily been half a million dollars a seat. Uh, the amount of research and development that would need to be done, not even to be certified, but to be safe. The thing is, I don't think, he, I, what I'm seeing now, I honestly believe that the more information comes out, we're going to see that he did a shockingly small amount of testing, uh, or model testing, or engineering, or, I mean, it sounds like he spent more money suing his engineers to shut up than he did actually paying engineers to do testing. <coughs> That's what I'm seeing. So, wow. Yeah. So a lot of hush money. Yeah. Yeah, he thought he knew better than everybody else. What was your interaction with him once you sent those emails? Um, well, it, you know, I or didn't, he didn't respond back. He, to re anything. he responded. He resp but he didn't respond. Well, when when I the first email I sent him, right, we were staying in the same house in the Bahamas. Really? Okay. And there yeah. was also, you know, we were part of a larger operation with close to 100 people there because of that, and we didn't have a lot of time to just sit down and have a private one-on-one -on -one chat. But uh, we did discuss it briefly, and. You know, he, he did make changes. I mean, uh, sorry guys, the, the battery died, but we'll get back to the questions and plus this boat is leaving real quick. So, making sure there's no more accidents uh, happening. So far, if you are enjoying this interview, I would remind you to hit that like button and subscribe because I am going on this ship, not today, um, tomorrow or Thursday we're going. So, 
you'll see this video first and then there'll be another video um, where I will upload. You heard these noises when you went down with him. You waited a day, you wrote out an email to Stockton Rush, and I want to read some of what you wrote in, in this email once you were back on land. Okay. You said, what we heard, in my opinion, sounded like a flawed defect in one area being acted on by the tremendous pressures and being crushed or damaged. From the intensity of the sounds, the fact that they never totally stopped at depth, and the fact that there were sounds at about 300 feet that indicated a relaxing of stored energy would indicate that there is an area of the hull that is breaking down, getting spongy. Can you explain just what you mean by getting spongy and also what Stockton Rush's response was to that email? Well, so, I mean, we were, we were actually staying in the same house in Marsh Harbor in the Bahamas uh, during this whole trip. And I took a lot of time to kind of digest the whole experience and sent him an email specifically because uh, I didn't want there to be any kind of like heated exchange between us. I mean, he's not the kind of character that would take criticism very well. The, the, the captain of the Titans reaction to your email, you guys were in the same building during the time in yeah. the Caribbean off of Bahamas. Um, you know, so I mean, ultimately he pushed back his diving operation one year and he... Well, did he do that because it was 2020 or? Uh, it was 2019. Okay. Uh, yeah, like when I went with him, I, I think it was, it was still the spring and the sun, uh, the diving would have been in the summer. Okay. But even after hearing all that noise, he seemed pretty sure of himself that he wanted to dive that year. And I remember a heated verbal exchange that he wasn't ready to do that. And uh, there was more emails back and forth between us where I tried to impress upon him that, uh, you know, to fly a certain type of aircraft, somebody needs a certain number of hours and a certain level of experience to, uh, have a skydiving license of a certain there's you need this to have to your different scuba certifications you need a certain number certain hours certain depths hit certain benchmarks there is no metric in the world that he could use to make it sound reasonable that he had hit certain benchmarks to be ready to take that operation with that many moving parts to the middle of the North Atlantic. Why Why did you feel like you needed to say something though? Um, I, I mean, if nothing, I mean, I I didn't really think the pressure hull was gonna fail and implode like that, but I mean, ultimately I thought he was, you know, gonna make a fool of himself and disappoint a lot of people. And, you know, he was making promises he couldn't keep. That, that was clear. And even the, the last, season. I mean, he was almost proud of the fact that he went out there and did less than half the number of dives that he had promised people he was going to do because it showed that he was trying and willing to innovate. It's like you got a bunch of disappointed people. Put, like And putting people's uh, lives in jeopardy yeah. while you're at it. Yeah, like on one hand he was trying to say, you know, this is safe, that I'm not risking safety, but on the other hand, the waiver that he was having you sign, uh, the wording couldn't have been any harsher. And he also, you know, for all his not doing enough testing and planning and thinking ahead, he sure seems to have thought ahead about his waiver. Uh, it uh, very specifically says that any disputes go to the Bahamas, which would be probably the easiest uh, for his descendants or, you know, company members that still uh, survive to, to deal with any kind of lawsuits there. Uh, and he also had the company split up into uh, different divisions. One was a nonprofit uh, in multiple different countries. So, I mean, it looks like he went above and beyond when he was covering like his own ass in the event that he died. Uh, but he didn't go above and beyond for his customer safety. Wow. Yeah. Now, you building this, you taking your time to build something special um, for your customers. I never really thought this was, well, this submarine I built specifically to take passengers and for this exact location. But when I started building a submarine, uh, you know, I was following through on a 
uh, a dream that I had that I got when I was nine and started building at 15 and I did not know that it was going to turn into a business. And even when I was trying to turn it into a business, I wasn't even sure what that was gonna look like. I was trying different, uh, I thought maybe treasure hunters, I thought maybe science, filmmaking. Tourism was just uh, kind of the thing that, that stuck. How, how important is Which it? isn't, to be fair, right. I would say tourism is 90% of my business, but uh, almost every year I deal with filmmakers and scientists. How important is it for you to have a, sa a safe uh, submarine? Um, well, obviously I don't want to die and I don't want to kill anybody. Uh, I, there are people that would say I'm unsafe, but I have a very long track record. Um, I've had incidents, but none that ever resulted in any injuries. And uh, over time I've learned a lot and, you know, I'm doing the best I can with the resources I can. And, uh, you know, you can always, if you can always do better if you have more time and money. Right. You gotta, you gotta strike a balance. Uh, which is very similar to things that came out of Stockton's mouth. However, he wasn't even close to striking that right balance. How often do you do safety um, checks on your 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 vehicle? Everything on there is redundant. Uh, I have two very short checklists. Uh, one, you know, before I go out on my dives, it's uh, well, you can look at it. it's on the side of the post right there. Right. But it's, you know, are the air tanks turned on? Is did you? switch out the oxygen, you switch out the carbon dioxide absorbent, you got water, you got towels, uh, basic uh, things that have batteries charged. Uh, and then the two most important things that are written there reminding me before I open the valve that allows the submarine to go down is, is the high pressure air turned on and is the hatch sealed tight? And to give you an idea of how, uh, safe submarines inherently are and how uh, not not to call myself an idiot but idiot proof I've actually failed to do both of those things in the past and didn't have uh, if you forget to seal it so you have to close the hatch but if you close the hatch and you don't seal it tight or even put a bolt in it what happens is as soon as you go underwater the pressure seals it for you but it takes a split second and you'll have a couple gallons of water come in real quick. Uh, that actually happened twice with the first submarine and the first time uh, I was, it happened because I was so excited to be diving in the conditions here. Right. And uh, the, the conditions here are so much better than they are in Florida where I had been diving. And the, uh, but I was very angry at myself and kind of disnerved when that happened. And also the shock of having, uh, you know, a couple gallons of water land on your head in a second was not what you want to have happen in the submarine. And that dive uh, was one of the very few that I've ever ended early. And then the uh, second time was actually only a few days after that. And I was, my reaction was different. I was angry at myself and, uh, but I wasn't, I didn't feel the same sense of danger, and my passenger, I think, picked up on that, and I uh, had towels in there, and then looked back to him and was like, well, I suppose you want to go up now, too, and he's like, well, are, are we in any danger? And I'm like, no, I just did this three days ago, like, it's like, you know, uh, I can't believe I'm so stupid. And this, like, how many years ago is this? Because oh, like you've been 25. doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and we actually continued and had a, a perfectly fine rest of our dive, you know, just our, how many our have you had? wet. I've done uh, over 2,300 now. Wow! Yeah. And uh, some of those are uh, some of those are up to 20 something hours, and a lot of them are in the four to eight hour range. So uh, by actual hours, I'm, I, I gotta add it up. Before I go to this uh, next conference, I'm gonna go through my dive logs and add them all up. But I have like seven or eight different dive logs. It's a lot to go through, but. Uh, you know, it, it, it might be coming close to 10,000 hours. It's, it's, there are very few people 
uh, that have ever had or have that many hours driving this kind of craft. That's amazing. And you, you know, we talked before, obviously, in the other interview where you mentioned you have scientists come here, you have uh, National Geographic come uh, with you on trips. National Geographic, Animal Planet, Discovery, television shows from half a dozen different countries. You're talking, so that's interesting because the I know the whole idea of, of being certified is important to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Why you, instead of someone that was certified, why do you think the National Geographic well, a huge uh, company would come to you. They don't have a lot of great options. That's how few submarines there are right now. Right, good uh, options. Uh, well, so the BBC, they wouldn't work with me. And the sub that they took David Attenborough down in uh, is, well, it's two subs on the same boat and it's owned by Ray Dalio, a hedge fund billionaire who, uh, he has this oceanographic grade ship. It actually uh, used to be owned by the French Oceanographic Institute. Right. Hey! And they retired it because they couldn't afford it. And he bought it. It was wrecked. Hey! No! He bought it, refurbished it, and uh, operates it as his private vessel. Actually, now he even retired that and got a bigger and better one. Money's no object to this guy. Right. But he does get a tax write-off if he has scientists on board. So he's actually uh, helping destroy what's little left of publicly funded manned submersible activity because scientists basically have an option of going on boats that are struggling to survive and have Spartan accommodations or this billionaire's insane yacht with catered food, hot tubs, and private cabins. That's interesting you mentioned that because yeah. I, 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 swore, I swore I saw a comment from James Cameron, mm -hmm. um, the one who created uh, the movie, uh, yeah. directed the movie uh, Titanic. James Cameron has had a lot to say about this whole incident. Right. And uh, I agree with everything that James Cameron has said. James Cameron, uh, besides being very wealthy from making some of the Biggest, biggest including movies including the biggest movies ever um, he was so financially savvy that when he built his submersible to go to the bottom of the Marianas Trench he actually got paid for it because he was partially sponsored by Rolex he was partially sponsored by National Geographic and made a television special with him and then he used 30 seconds of footage from his expedition in his Avatar movie, and then could write off the whole thing as an expense for making his movie. Well, you can't hate him. I'm not. I'm, I got <laughs> mad respect for him. Okay. Like if you got an opportunity to do all that and have it be a tax write-off and a business expense and get sponsorship, you, you're killing it. Right. But that's the level of innovative thinking and deep pockets and connections that is in. You know, so when these guys are like, wow, you got to be certified. That's great if you can pull off a financial arrangement like that. That's not the majority of the world. So what do you say to a, like a billionaire who says, hey, you know, these submarines are built with billions of dollars. Millions. Millions of dollars yeah. um, to small business, people who want to create and I innovate like you. I say that the deep sea, which let's just define the deep sea as where light cuts out, which is roughly 1,800 feet. By volume, that is the largest living space on our planet. Even though you see a lot of air above us, most birds or insects are not going to leave the ground by more than, what, 500, 1,000 feet. It's getting cold and windy, and they don't want to go up there. However, the ocean, the average depth is 14,000 feet, and all of that has life in it. So, when you really start doing the math, even though the ocean covers 70% of the planet in terms of volume of living space you're well over 95 percent which is water so deep it's never seen the sun this is the majority ecosystem on our whole planet and there are a few dozen vehicles in the world that have the capability of exploring that with people on board and the majority are now owned by the super wealthiest toys and the uh 15, 20 years ago, it used to be the majority was 
operated by first world governments for research and government funding for that research has gone down and the robot technology has gotten better. Uh, a lot of the scientists that I've had down in uh, my sub, they've spent their whole career studying the deep ocean from computer screens and books and videos and literally getting there personally was cost prohibitive and I provided them the opportunity to one time see with their own eyes in person what they've spent their whole life studying. That's the situation we're in now. So it's guys like you that are making it possible. Well, for there's not really like guys like me. That's the thing. Like I'm, you know, me and Stockton were number one and number two subs going into the deep ocean, taking the public for hire that weren't certified. And the other one, I mean, the, the, there's one submarine in Curacao, that, or there are a couple submarines in Curacao now. Uh, the operation has grown, but they go to a thousand feet only. And actually, when you get uh, below 600 feet there, the uh, environment is not that, it, it's more like a muddy bottom and not a lot to see. Uh, there's a sub in Cocos Islands that has been taking people for years to uh, a thousand feet, but... Oh, people in the water, guys. <laughs> okay. um, there are a few subs that are taking people to a thousand feet. There's no uh, other operation that's taking people into the deep. Well, there is a sub now in the Canary Islands that uh, has the capability to go about 2,000 meters, but they are not, they're, they're relatively new and they are uh, more expensive and they, uh, We'll see, we'll see how Big that, business, small business. Small business. It's run actually by uh, somebody who told, uh, who came down here, dove with me. I, I know him quite well. Right. Uh, he, he's been out there for, I want to say, maybe two years. And uh, I don't know how many trips he's done, but uh, he's, he's making a go of it. When I, when I think about you guys, I'm, I'm thinking about an opportunity that I, I probably wouldn't be able to get if I were to... <laughs> You know, because yeah. financially, I don't have that type of money, 250000 to go traveling. Well, uh, even uh, Ocean Gate doing that for two fifty, uh, that was a, a rare opportunity. Uh, you know, if you, you can't just buy a seat on the Chinese Deep Submersible or Alvin. Uh, those things are booked up by, by scientists years in advance, and it's all about uh, grant money and that your proposal for specific research is approved. It's very rare that they even get journalists down in those vehicles. Awesome. I think I, I think we got it, guys. Um, like I said, I am going on a uh, trip, so don't miss that subscribe today. And I, I want to ask you a question. Well, what can you tell somebody who who has a dream to do something amazing like you? You started. You had a dream at the age of nine to start something, and now you're here. And um, what can you give uh, people and I, uh, some uh, advice? I mean, I mean, in my case, being stubborn and persistent and, uh, you know, doing your homework and, and the, the, the hard work paid off. Uh, I want to thank the captain for uh, giving us a very exclusive interview on his thoughts on what happened and his history dealing with the Titan. And, um, yeah, we are going on the submersible, uh, so make sure you subscribe. Don't miss it. Um, and share this video and yeah man uh, when we going what Thursday. day Thursday and two days from now right yeah. all right guys so I'm gonna release this video maybe tomorrow or Thursday and um, I'll have another video of the experience going in the submersible thank you guys for listening and yeah I see you later yo all right now could I get a like a picture of you in front of it all right Thanks for watching this video. If this is your first video, try to watch all the other episodes and catch up so you don't miss what's happening next. I guarantee you, it's going to be crazy. Yo.